Hey, hey, welcome to a brand new episode of Straight Up Sugar Podcast. I am your host, Calvin, joined by my co-host, Lee. Lee, how you doing, sir? I am great, Calvin. How are you doing? Yeah, it's, I'm doing good, sir. And it's, it's me and Lee solo today, man. So we're kind of uh, doing this thing, right? We're rocking this thing. Rocking this thing, man. And hey, man, it is, like, I'm glad that everything's time to like finally open up. Uh, you know, we've been going through this pandemic for almost uh, over a year now, and so much has changed. We've, you know, we've uh, we've kind of had these conversations, I guess, in private more. But I, I know on my end, at least, like job security has been a huge worry this past year. Um, we're just now getting to a place where, like you said, stuff is opening back up again and, you know, the income is coming back in for, for more businesses. So that's good for, for me, for steady employment. I'm, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure about you, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to get checks every two, every week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and sometimes like, you know, cause like just even dealing with, uh, COVID so many people lost their jobs and like, you know, you and I were, fortunate enough to keep our jobs mm-hmm. and uh like i mean even i mean who doesn't complain about their job first off everybody does but like right. when the, when there's something like covid happens you know people who did who weren't essential workers uh like bartenders and mm-hmm. different places like people people lost their jobs man and like that's kind of all they know and like i think even in hawaii like that's known for tourists and yeah. when you when, when you don't have like tourism in a state that's built off tourism like I think at one point Hawaii had like 23 percent of the state unemployed and it's like golly you know but back here on the mainland like you know I think it was like 0.4 at one point or uh maybe four percent I'm sorry at the time it was I was like golly so I mean it's just like people who lost their jobs man it it, COVID really impacted not just the, the people in America, but worldwide, you know, think about Abu Dhabi and these other places that people want to go for a uh, vacation, man. So it, COVID, it, it not only impacted people's uh, like, you know, health, but it impacted their pocketbooks too. And like, we're going to actually continue our uh, COVID impact series because I mean, Lee, outside of uh, DoorDash, which I've kind of, <clears throat> if you can look at me right now, kind of uh, became best friends with uh, outside of DoorDash, uh, there was one particular company that kind of saw uh, a skyrocket in business when it came to employment. Lee, what was that business? Oh, that was just this little independent, nonprofit, little small pr- project that you may have heard of called OnlyFans. OnlyFans. And like, and, and like, and if unless you've been living under a rock, you know, OnlyFans, you've seen it before. And uh, I think that so many people just ran the OnlyFans because, I mean, uh, from celebrities to like uh, YouTube personalities or online personalities, people just flocked to OnlyFans because it was way at the time to where Hollywood was closing down, bars were closing down. Like so many places were closed down and people, you know what? A lot of people didn't care about COVID, you know, when it comes to bills, you still got to pay your bills. Like my lights still got to get paid, you know? And so some people really had to go to OnlyFans or DoorDash, but OnlyFans was at the top because I think it was like Bella Thorne or one celebrity that she made about $2 million in a month. Yep. Redonkulous. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the the flip side works too. It's like, you know, you got all these people unemployed. So yeah, you've got the people that that need work, but you also have people that need, well, entertainment. It's like you're stuck in your house with nothing to do. Even if you are working from home, you know, you've got, you've got all this extra downtime that you're not used to. So I've got to fill this space somehow. So I'm not alone with my thoughts. And hey, I've got this OnlyFans thing here that's popped up. Right. And, and that's a real concern. And like, because we're, and even with me and personally, me being at home all day and not really, and, and, and it's messed up because I, I'm in walking distance to Walmart and, you know, other restaurants. So, I mean, like, I don't have to travel far. And so it's, it's literally Walmart is maybe, I would say maybe 300 steps away from me. Wow. Like, and it's that close. It's just over a gate and I'm there. But, you know, having these thoughts along, you know, being work from home, you know, it can kind of, you kind of get these thoughts in your head. And it's like, you start doubting your own employment because you work from home, but these people don't have jobs. So 
Lee, and we we kind of briefly touched on OnlyFans, but for those who do not know what OnlyFans and how people are making money off of it, can you just tell us what uh, OnlyFans is in a brief synopsis? Yeah, uh, OnlyFans is basically a subscription-based uh, social media app where you, instead of uh, following people, it, it's, it looks a lot like Twitter, uh, just just straight up. It look, it, like if you look at the interface, it looks basically like Twitter. But um, instead of following people, you subscribe to them and they can you know set their prices or whatever based on, I guess, what how, however much they think they're worth, which is kind of cool if you think about it. But um, but yeah, you can subscribe to people and there's all like Calvin said, there's all types of people. There's celebrities, there's like chefs, there's people that, you know, teach you like how to do stuff. And, you know, you can just pay whatever they ask and bam, you've got access to all this content they've created. And you could just pull that up at any time for just like a monthly subscription. Right. And like Lee said, you're at home alone and, you know, uh, most people back in the day, if you're at home all alone, you make babies. So you can only imagine what happens when you're at home alone and what the thoughts are going on in your head. And, and OnlyFans has taken a turn to where, you know, it's not just about sex and porn, uh, but that really has definitely been the focal point of OnlyFans, right? Um, yeah, man, look, if you leave anything alone on the internet for more than five minutes, it, it's, it's going to get a little porny. It's, it's just a rule of life. And that happened to OnlyFans, I think in like three minutes. Right, because it, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the curiosity that people have and like, you know, and so but in th those who have OnlyFans use that to their advantage. You know, like, so say if you're a stripper or whatever, you know, this is a way to have virtual strip clubs, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it's they're, they're filling a, a hole that was carved out due to COVID. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump on this and kind of go about talking to those who have OnlyFans and how this helped them financially to get over COVID. But Lee, we have a twist, all right? So we're going to talk to a, a ex stripper who used to be a stripper and now she's a politician turned preacher uh politician turn, preacher turned politician there we go uh who's going to give us a little bit more insight about the sex industry and the dark side of it and kind of gives us her opinion when it comes to sex work i can guarantee you all if you stay along with us this would be an episode like no other so make sure you stay tuned on the other side of the break. Summer is approaching, that season where most friends and family travel, have family reunions, and enjoy that family vacation you've had over a year to plan. If you haven't had your vaccinations yet, there's still time. You might think you're fine now, but the reality is you're not. There's still contagious variants out there, and some states and cities are still behind on getting vaccinated. Don't ruin your family vacation by worrying about traveling in a hot spot. And don't be the one to cause a loved one at your family reunion to get sick. If you're still deciding on whether or not to take the vaccine, do some real research. And most of all, do what's best for you and your family. Take the politics out of it. And like everything on our show, think about it with an open mind. Tired of the same old boring clothes? Want to support your favorite podcast but don't know how? Well, you're in luck. The Straight Up Show podcast store is finally here. In our Teespring shop, you can find all the merch that tells the world you're keeping it straight up. From t-shirts to masks to even leggings, our store has you covered. Just visit straightupshowpodcast.com and click that merchandise button. That's S-T-R, the number eight, Up Show Podcast. Dot com. Okay, so today, uh, like we said, we're talking about OnlyFans and like, I guess just sex work and uh, how it's becoming so uh, popular. I mean, Lee, this is uh, this is kind of uncharted territory for you and me. Yeah, a little bit. Now, it's it's a movement I've been following a, a, a little bit for a little while now. Um, and it's, it's something I, I'm seeing getting more and more traction. And honestly, that's that's why I thought, hey, this is a fun topic to discuss. 
And um, so we've got our two guests, uh, Maya and Lethal here. Um, and they are, you know, both sex workers. They both uh, do OnlyFans. And my goal here is to kind of destigmatize sex work. Um, and just have an all-around general honest discussion about it. Um, first of all, Maya and Lethal, how are, how are you guys? We're good. How are you guys? <laughs> we are great. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for taking the time to do this, by the way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thanks for having us. So uh, I guess just to start things off, what um, is, 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 is sex work a good title for what you both do? Um, we don't use that really. Um, we prefer high-end escorts because we don't, we're not, I don't know, it's different. There's different, um, I guess, levels to it, you could say. Well, uh, what, what level would you say you're at? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's why we say high end. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, well, so, um, how, how did you get into the, the high end escorting? Like, is, is there a progression there? Is it just something you just kind of dip your toe in and then right, rise through the ranks or? Yeah, I mean, um, originally I got into it, um, maybe about three years ago. I was going to school and I had gone to school with a, uh, this girl and she was working at night while her kids were being watched and then she would go to school in the morning and she kind of got me into it and then I stopped doing it and then when I moved um kind of into the south I kind of got back into it um and I met a lot of different people um that work in the industry as well so it kind of helped me out in progressing and getting further than where I was when I began. All right, so let me let me ask a question uh, <laughs> right quick about uh, Maya and Lethal. So like when you started doing this, did you have a, a regular job before this or? Yeah, I did. I actually had a lot of regular <laughs> jobs before this. <laughs> and you just kind of got into it or? Um, yeah, I, um, I mean, I did a little bit of everything. I used to work in fast food, I've worked, um, as like a legal assistant, I worked at Jiffy Lube. I worked a lot of different jobs, and then um, I was going to school, and that's kind of when I ended up jumping into it. Um, and then I, a couple years later, jumped back into it. But since I've been doing it for about a year now, I was working a nine to five. Um, I was a server, um, and I had lost my job. It was when COVID had like very first started. Oh wow. Um, I lost my job and that's when I actually originally got back into it. Um, so I needed money, I needed to pay my bills, you know. <laughs> I didn't wanna end up not having a place to live or a car or anything because of COVID. So I just started, you know, doing it again. <laughs> and, and and money is pretty much the answer I expected there. So yeah, but that um that does bring me to a question I had on down the line was, um, so you, you got back into this during the start of COVID. So right. I, was I was wondering how, you know, lockdown, the outbreak, everything, how that affected, how that's affected business for you. Um, it actually hasn't, surprisingly. Okay. So, I mean, even when, um, like, cities are, because I travel a lot, so when cities are shut down and stuff, yeah. It's more people because people get bored. <laughs> right. People have nothing to do. They're just kind of sitting in the house twiddling their thumbs. <laughs> what is your kind of day-to-day -day, like life now? Um, like, do you have like a set work schedule that you kind of adhere to? Or do you, do you set your own hours? Or do you kind of have to play it by ear every day? Um, depends on where I'm at, um, like what city I'm in. Um, most of the cities I go to, I have been to before, so I know if it's like a morning city, it's going to be busy in the morning or the afternoon or late night into the early morning. Um, so I usually kind of go based off that. So it's kind of different depending on where I'm at. But usually I wake up and I already have people, you know, waiting on me. So I already start working and then I'll go out. Sometimes I get my nails done, go shopping, just 
go hang out with friends, go get some drinks, get some food, things like that. I just kind of do whatever. <laughs> Yeah, that, that doesn't sound too dissimilar if you were, say, an Uber driver or something. Right. <laughs> you actually invest in yourself. Like, you actually, like, make sure you're pampered and you know, make sure that, you know, well kept up, right? Yeah. Um, I always have my – I always do that. I always am buying stuff for myself. Um, it just kind of comes with it. So, I know you travel a lot. Like, did you meet Lethal while traveling or – <laughs> Yeah, we're actually related. <laughs> okay. Oh, so y'all, it's a family thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, we are wait. related. We're, we're cousins. Oh, okay. So let me ask you this then, like, do you like, does does your family know that y'all do this or? Um, Mine does. Well, but they don't know about her doing it. Yeah. But my mom knows. My dad knows. My sisters now, things like that. <laughs> Was that a tough conversation to have? Um, not really because I don't, you know, live with my parents and I don't really communicate with them. I it was actually not my choice to tell them. My oh, ex no. actually contacted them and told them for me. Uh, oh no, that's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. <laughs> kind of going back to the I guess the day to day operation. Well, to uh, to kind of bring this to the to the subject it, at hand both of you have an only fans page correct um only well you don't have one only fans i have only fans <laughs> okay so how did you get into only fans um actually a lot of my clients requested it um i sell oh. content personally so like i sell pictures and videos and stuff like that um and then my clients started requesting me to get an OnlyFans just because they spent a lot of money on all my content and they'd rather just spend a monthly price. Okay. <laughs> so economic. I love it. So, I mean, like, y'all have, like, this hustle down pat. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure y'all are making more money than you are as a regular nine to five right now, right? Yeah. We make um, minimum about 300000 a year. So, uh, are you guys hiring? <laughs> yes we are <laughs> I mean it is the world's oldest profession <laughs> right <laughs> yeah we make pretty said, good money it allows us to live a comfortable lifestyle yeah, hashtag high end right <laughs> yes <laughs> so I mean I, so I mean you, you travel you, you do like almost 300k a year like who are some of like the type of clients that you have like somebody that maybe that you wouldn't expect Um, I actually have had like basketball players from overseas and stuff um that i see i have a lot of older clients as well a lot of my clients are older and wealthy what would you say is maybe the weirdest request you've gotten from a client mm, i don't not really weird requests i don't get um but like i've had like weird people <laughs> <laughs> like they just put off an odd energy or something um, like I've had people where I show up at their house and they're like smoking meth and trying to get me to smoke with them. And I'm oh. like, no, thank you. <laughs> but you need to put that away or I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I get weird stuff like that. Like, but I have never had any, um, really weird requests, honestly. And that, that actually brings me to another question, which is uh, safety, since y'all, y'all, you know, right now you do have to operate outside the law. Like, what measures mm -hmm. do you have to take to kind of protect yourself doing this job? Um, I can't answer a whole lot of that. However, um, we just are very cautious with the types of people we see. We have a screening process that we kind of stick to. Okay. Um, and if they don't come if they don't comply with that, um, if they are not meeting up to that screening process, then I just don't see them at all. Not going to risk it. <laughs> it's kind of like you have like a form of discrimination a little bit, but you kind of have to as well, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> I'm not saying like anything like racial, just but like just, you know, I mean, you got to no, yeah. be familiar with your surroundings and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, I do. I do have to be very cautious and very familiar. I've had um, people 
stalk me at my hotels and stuff like that. So definitely have to be cautious in this business. Like, so I, I know that, um, like I said, that was a lady uh, we talked about earlier. She made $2 million uh, in a month. Just like a celebrity made a $2 million in a month from doing OnlyFans. Like, uh, I mean, do you think that this is going to jeopardize y'all's like uh, work and stuff like that, that other people are trying to get into it? Like, it's kind of like stealing money from you. Do you think, do you look at it that way or? No, I don't see it that way. Um, in the industry, I feel that there's no competition. I don't see it really as a competition just because everybody's trying to get money, you know? And I actually will refer people to my like friends and stuff in other cities that I have and things like that. I don't see it as a competition at all. And I don't think that OnlyFans is gonna jeopardize the work either. So there's a, a little bit of networking there as well. And that, that also probably mm -hmm. ties into the to the whole safety thing because you're you're probably all talking to each other and it's like, okay, watch out for this person, right? Yeah. Yeah. There are places that you can um go to see like certain men that other people have tried to see and it just goes south and things like that. So there's there's people that look out for each other pretty much. So let me um let me play devil's advocate, okay? Can you handle it? Because this show is called Straight Up. So I mean yeah. I mean, can you handle this, okay? <laughs> yes I can. All right. So to those out there saying like, you know, you're disgusting, you know, they call you all kinds of names, like, you know, I mean try to berate you for what you do. Uh what do you say to those people? It doesn't even phase me, honestly. I have, um, have you guys heard of, of the Swipe swipe Up app? No, I haven't heard of it, no. It's, a, it's an app, you link it to your Snapchat pretty much, and anybody can ask you a question anonymously pretty much. You don't know who they are, you get a lot of questions. I get a lot of hate from people, but it just, it doesn't really bother me because I'm very safe and I'm very cautious with my job so I don't feel that I'm nasty I don't see myself as nasty and I don't see anybody that's in this industry as that either so it just doesn't really phase me when I first got in it was it was kind of hurtful <laughs> to hear that type of stuff but you get used to it after time and like so I mean they're still playing devil's advocate like you know why don't you really grow up and just get a real job I mean, I could, but this pays probably more than most jobs that I would get at this point in my life. Unless I go to school and spend time on and money on college, which I do plan on doing, but not for something that's going to make as much as I'm making. Right. But I'm not trying to advocate at all uh, for what you right. do, you know, not at all. But but at the same time, you pretty much have business down packed already. Um. I want to own my own business. However, it you know takes time and money in order to do so. Um, and me doing this, it also helps me build clientele because I am nationwide. I am I go across the entire country, so everyone knows me in every city. I have people I know and things like that. So that kind of helps me out. So when I do start my business venture within the next year, it's able to launch hopefully better. So you have the end game in all this. I mean, like, so you have a mindset that you're not going to be in this forever. Yeah, I definitely have an end game. I say going into this industry, whether you're a stripper, a sex worker, doing online things, you have to have an end game. You can't go into it without an end game or you will be in the game forever. <laughs> I know that because trust me, I know your body doesn't last <laughs> forever. So Right. <laughs> and uh, things start to fall. Uh, yeah, and you can right. look at that more, more ways than another. <laughs> uh, but mm -hmm. uh, so we're joined by Maya and Lito. They've been, uh, they are uh, high-end escorts. Uh, as I said, this is kind of uncharted territories. But uh, Lee, Maya, Lito, let me ask y'all a question. Like, do y'all just think that because, I mean, with the whole Ashley Madison coming out, you see people like preachers and uh, coaches and people that probably would say, oh, well, this is wrong and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, what do you say to those people or about those people that say, well, sex is on everybody's mind, but there are so many people who are uncomfortable talking about it, but still be hypocritical about it. What do you say to those people? Okay. So the difference is between the people that criticize us and us is that they do, they do it for free and we do it 
for money and we do it safely. So there was this, we do it for. It's safer than a one night stand. Yeah. Basically that most people have on a weekly basis. <laughs> basically you're not getting played. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's easy. And honestly, it's our body. You know, we only live one life. If we want to live our life wealthy and well off, then let us. <laughs> so do, do y'all think that we'll, we'll see a day where your profession is, is made legal, where you can, like, I don't know, file, do it like a 401k? Is, is, that, is that something you hope for? I mean, I hope for that, yes, because it sh shouldn't be illegal. As long as you're taking the necessary steps to be safe, then it should be fine. But there are states where you can get your license in, like Colorado. I believe Utah might be one. Um, there's a couple others as well. Oh, wow. I, d I actually did not know that. That's awesome. Yeah, you can get a license. For yeah, you can get you in those states if they catch you without a license, you get a ticket. Oh, wow. wow. But you can have a license. Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't even know this either. Wow, this is uh, right. It's crazy. Let me go to Colorado right quick. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, let me ask you this, y'all. I mean, like, I know that, I mean, y'all sound pretty young, um, but you don't worry about how this can impact, uh, like, say, if, you're, if you have future children or if you have children, uh, how this may impact them, like, you know, years to come, like, say if, like, your, your, your kids in school and they pull up, old, you know, stuff of you or pull up your old OnlyFans, I mean, you, you're not That's worried about that at all? Honestly, no. It's, they can't ever find it because y'all don't even really know if that's our real name or not. <laughs> like, they can't really find us. Yeah, but also for me, um, if I, if my kids in the future, if I have a daughter and she came to me about, you know, starting at OnlyFans or selling content, as long as she's older, you know, first of all, <laughs> then I would be okay with explaining to her what I have done, just because I would rather her be safe. I'm not going to lie to my kids. If it comes out, you know, I'm just going to be completely honest about it. I think, I think, Lee, that uh, one thing about this generation, our generation, is that we're more accepting of who our kids are. And, you know, because yeah. trust me, I mean, because trust me, I know I've done stuff that I am not proud of. And I'm like, dang, man, I did this. Like, wow. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, like, I, I, I used to be a DJ at a club at 15 years old. So, I mean, like, mm -hmm. that was pretty sure that was illegal. But right. you know, I, I, I had to make sure I had money in my pocket. So we're not mm -hmm. knocking the hustle at all. Trust me. So right. uh, definitely, you know, I mean, I guess kudos to y'all for coming on our show and being brave enough to actually, you know, say this. I, I hope both of y'all stay safe out there. Um, I, I know you can't really wear a mask in these situations, but, you know, do what you can. Actually, <laughs> sometimes we do. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> we have clients that do that as well. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you, guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> thank oh, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Give me a second to catch myself right through. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Maya and Lethal uh, for coming on the show today. Um, you, you all definitely be safe. Uh, you know, if y'all have anything y'all ever want to come back and tell us, uh, let us know. Uh, we, we can't, we can't say we can uh, show you your OnlyFans, but uh, if you uh, if you see Maya and Lethal uh, together, make sure y'all give them love and uh, y'all be careful out there because I mean it's a dangerous world. You know, I know where I come from. I know where y'all come from, but it can be really dangerous. So y'all take care. Uh, I mean, y'all relatives look out for each other and, uh, you know, y'all be safe, okay? Thank you, you guys too. Bye. Straight up means to be able to speak in a way that is straight up, to be honest and to speak your truth. Raw, uncut, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's blunt, you know, straight to the point, this what it is. It's just a place to be open and honest. And that's what I appreciate most about it and it, provides a place for community members to come together and just be straight up with each other about things that are going on in the world because it affects all of us. Uh, unfiltered, raw, with all the cursing that Calvin does. Straight up is just being real, telling it, telling it like it is, you know, um, being you. 
being solid, being who you are, no matter what it is, no matter what situation you're faced with, right? This is who you are. It really, it really speaks to me saying it is what it is and it ain't what it is, straight up. Okay, so we're back and we're continuing our episode about the COVID impact. Uh, and it's about OnlyFans because OnlyFans has been one of the one thing that everybody's gotten into uh, since COVID-19 has started. So uh, joining us today, I have another guest. Uh, she has an OnlyFans and she has uh, decided to come on the show and kind of give us some feedback about why she got into it. So without further ado, help me welcome Michaela. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for awesome. uh, coming on the show. I know this is kind of like a, a crazy subject, but I mean, you are you are like one of the most straight up people to actually say, hey, you know what? I don't care. This is me. So yeah. uh, <laughs> so tell us about you. Just tell us like who you are and things like that. Uh, okay. So I'm a mom. I have a seven-year-old son. He's my life. Um, God, my hobbies. I, I love to go outdoors, hiking. I'm really a nature girl at heart. Um, I, I'm horrible at art completely, but I have a great fashion sense. Um, I like uh, I like movies. I'm like a huge like video game nerd. So pretty much like random, very random. It's a very random person. So, yeah. and then but you have an OnlyFans. So, uh, if you don't mind, like tell us how did you get into OnlyFans? You want to actually? It's crazy. So, you know, I got laid off from my job, um, and I normally serve and bartend. And I got like some, you know, because you get those messages here and there, and people like joke around about like, oh, I'll pay you this for da da da. Well, this guy said that um, he would pay me two hundred fifty dollars for some pictures, and I thought he was crazy. I did not believe him, but he sent it to me for four photos that didn't even have to be complete nude. It was whatever I wanted. As long as there was like some type of like risqueness to it, you know? And I realized how easy it was to like use what's something that I already do, you know? I mean, like being in relationships. And, and, you know, it's just like, it felt awesome. Like it was crazy to like know that someone wanted to pay that much money to see me out of all people in that way. And I don't know, it just, it gave me like so much confidence. So, like, you know, you didn't, I mean, it has a lot of factors in it. It was easy money, and it kind of uplifted you a little bit, right? Yeah. Saying that, like, you know, my body is good enough to yeah. have people pay to. So, Which is kind of silly if you think about it. You know, some people might think that, that in a different way. But, like, for me, you know, like, as a child, like, I struggled with, like, the way that, like, I, I, I looked at myself. And so... You know, I always like look for validation from everyone else except for myself. And it was like being able to like look at yourself in the mirror and know that it's not just you who has problems that everyone does and that there are so many people out there that would would love to even just like see me in a bathing suit, which is like made me feel like just so beautiful and like really kind of like empowered to like be a woman this day and age and know that like my body like actually is like my choice and I can do what I want with it and people still love me for it and if they don't you know then they're probably not good for me true so like that was one guy that was curious like was he like one of the only ones that said hey I'm kind of curious well I mean it happened for a while but I never thought it was never like first one Anytime anyone's ever asked that, it was never like the money was like jokeable, I guess. And I never thought that I would really do it because I was like, oh no, I'm a classy one. I would never do something like that. Like, but then I thought, okay, so what about like all the boyfriends and well, all the guys that I've dated? Like, they, they didn't pay me. But, so it kind of got to the point where it was like more people started to ask. And when I got laid off and my and I was getting unemployment, and I was, you know, my bills were just adding up. I like want to go back to school, you know, and, and I want to do, you know, just call this. And I came from a really bad home. So like I really want to work with kids from bad homes. And I think that's kind of another part of it. It was like if if I love myself, then I can teach other people how to love them like their selves, you know? And so more people kind of started asking and I kind of started like thinking, you know what? Like I could really do something with this. Like and eventually I made one 
as a joke, I made a status and I said, oh, well, I guess, you know, COVID's, we're going back to stage two. I'm going to have to go make it OnlyFans. And I did it. And I had like 200 subscribers in under like 24 hours. And it was crazy. It was crazy. Now, is it like that now? We're working on it. <laughs> but it was, it just felt so awesome. And I don't know. It was, it was, it was good for COVID because I had nowhere to go. I mean, I couldn't work. I have a kid, you know, I have family that's very susceptible to getting sick. So I needed to be at home and then, and I needed to also support, you know, my family. So with that, you know, two, like two follow-up questions off what you said. And um, so, so one, like you said, you had 200 followers in 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, does it not bother you that people like this is on like Facebook or or Twitter well, or? I did advertise through Facebook and tw and Twitter and Instagram, but again, like it. I mean, if you've seen my Facebook, I'm a pretty like open person. You know, I like to make jokes. Like memes are like my life. Like so, it was already like okay. People have already seen some of the weird stuff that I've reposted. And I had so many friends, you know, I've gone to so many high schools. I moved around so much because I was in an abusive home. So like, that's like why I wanted to like, get into child psychology from the get go. So I have all these friends. I've always had, you know, guys that were probably interested in me in some way, or at least so I assumed. And I was like, all right, this is the only platform that I can really advertise on. And I put it on all three of them. And, and I just sat there and watched it just, just, just. Okay, another one, another one, another one. And I just, I think I probably cried. Like uh, tears of joy, right? Or tears of like. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, tears okay. of joy. Because like, to me, I'm not a female, but like, I'll be kind of like creeped out that all these people that, that are my friends, that, that now they're really just curious about seeing me a in lot the of nude. Us, a lot of are people that I, I know personally too, sometimes it's like, oh, okay, cool. And does that but make hey, you? I does it make you look at them differently or? No, not at all. Actually, some of them I still talk to like in person. And like, you're not even scared. Like they may like say, well, you, we saw you knew it. Now I want to take it a little bit too far and get a little, a little friendly. You know what I mean? If they did, um, which hasn't happened so far, but if it did, then they would just, they would get blocked and they'd be out of my life. I understand because that. There's a limit, you know, like, I'm like, you know, there's some girls in the fans that put everything, you know, like, like full videos. Mine's like pretty for the most part, like, there's pictures, like, you're going to see everything that you're promised. But when it comes to like videos, I don't do the full video. It's like clips, you know, it's like, a, like a, it's like, a, it's like an, um, a commercial you'd see for like the Whopper and it just came out or the McRib's back and you really want the McRib. So, but you're not going to get the McRib unless you pay for the McRib. Does that make sense? So it's like a, it's like a, like a process. So it's like, I'm going to give you like a, like a tease. And then yeah, I'm just gonna, if you exactly. want more, you have and if to. if you want more, you can DM me and then we can talk there. It's a nice little hustle. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. I want to talk. You know, I wanna, I wanna talk. Like a lot of the dudes just want to like sit and have conversations and have, I mean, I've had some, I've had some funny questions out there. I definitely want to know most of them, but some of them are great and they're, they make my day. And they also like, it's just like, I think everyone has their thing, you know, like everyone has their own fetishes and, 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 you know, wants and needs that they just can't get because of who they are, or maybe they're shy and, that's kind of like, instead of me having to go out there and, and like, you know, be, cause I could be a stripper, like those kind of things I could do. Cause I'm way too shy doing it in person, like way too shy, but over the, over the like phone on the, through the camera, it's like, I can be that person they want me to be for that time. And it makes them feel good. And it makes me feel good. It makes my bank account feel good. <laughs> Yeah, I like to hear that. And like I said, I, 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 it's so different to see people. Like our show is called Straight Up. So you're you're just being so straight up about you being yourself with this and OnlyFans. There are like people, I know that there was a story about a teacher. Uh, she was a teacher. 
in New York and she was getting laid off and well, she had to do both jobs and so to get some extra money, she yeah. secretly had a OnlyFans. Ooh. But they fired her because she's a teacher, like, and she's involved in kids. Like, do you ever think about like the impact it could have on your kid, maybe down the line or something like that at all? It's funny you ask that because you know, I've I've actually had a lot of people ask me that question. And the best thing about this is that um, you know, it is very, very private um for me when it comes to my like family you know he knows never to touch mommy's phone everything's locked up like any kind of photos or anything that I keep personal is like put away like in my phone to make sure the only person that could ever access that would be someone who has a passcode or my or my thumbprint and then you know if it got to that point where I was really still doing this by the time my son was old enough to have his friends tell him hey oh my god I saw your mom and she was doing it, did it then I'm probably going to make fun of other friends, first of all. And, and then I'm going to sit him down and I'm going to tell him, I'm going to be like, look, you know, this, this happened at a, at a really crazy time. And, you know, exactly. And, and the world is what it is now. And don't go on that site, <laughs> at least not on mine. And don't tell your friends to do it. Um, but that, you know, it, it to, lo- to love yourself. And, and, I, and I think me and my son are so close because, you know, I have been a single mom for like his whole, most of his life. And um, I think that he would understand. I don't think he'd really be weirded out. And if he did, I think we'd be able to communicate where he's the same way where he's very, very intuitive and smart. Like he, he already believes in like all the rights that people should have. He's always questioning things and like wondering why the world is the way it is. And so I think I'd be more irritated if it was an adult telling me that I'm a bad person because of my child or having a child and doing this than I would ever worry about if my son happened upon it and asking that question. You know what I mean? Mm. Trust Which me. Yeah. Have, yeah. yeah. Almost and, never. Happened. Yeah. And trust me. I know like, you know, my parents had to do what they had to do just to make, make sure we survived. And, you know, here we are now, like, you know, we're, you know, any parent would know they would do anything to support their child. So, I mean, I don't think yeah. this is any different. And, what- and it's not illegal, you know, it's so Absolutely. I want to do things the right way, of course, and also empower myself, feed my son, keep a roof over our head, you know, get my nails done every once in a while, which I never get to do. So yeah, it's pretty, it's been pretty great. Now, one of our guests, uh, and you can, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but uh, one of our one of our guests, uh, she does both. She actually Ooh. does sex work and do all the fans as well. As well, See, I'm um, all for sex work, so right. I I feel like discrimination against that. I would be a hypocrite because even though I'm not out there putting myself and in, in that, and it's for her, it's more of the risk that I worry about for any woman because of the world the way it is. But sex work is sex work, and I am, I'm a woman and I empower other women. And if she's okay and she is happy and she enjoys what she does, then then she should do it, you know? But like something like that, a push came to shove, like, would you ever, you know, do you? That's a tough question because I feel like I, I feel like I'm, I've always been very good about like finding any other possible way to do things, but if it really if that was my only option I mean yeah I mean I don't I don't see why that it would be a bad thing you know I don't it's not something that I would prefer to ever have to do but if I needed to 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 take care of my kid of course because my child is my life and and that's how that's how it should be with every parent you should always go for the better option for the most part but if that's what's what you're good at and makes you happy and then do it and it's a little bit harder I guess when you've done it for so long you know because I you know I know that it's like normally in like that line of work it's something you're kind of like um either how do I say this either it's something you've known about because of friends and family and it's just your your pot the people you surround yourself around so that's maybe why it's easier to do that instead of like getting on why but OnlyFans is not as easy as people think. Like, yes, I had 200 subscribers the first time I opened it, but now I have to really try a lot harder. And I had to get, you know, Alex involved just to get me to like 
have more advertising and people to hear my name because it's the internet and not everyone has phones. Not everyone has cameras and, and right. You gotta and, do what you gotta do. But I think one of the reasons why is because when I guess when you first started, when COVID first started, so many people weren't on OnlyFans. Do you think that's yeah. probably one of the reasons now is that there's more people out there, like more oh definitely. Attention? Definitely. I think I think I think um I think it blew up because of yes, COVID for sure. And I think also because it got um, more norm, especially when like Bella Thorne, you know, like popular star gets on OnlyFans. Oh my gosh! Um, and and for someone like her, who yeah, which is not like my idol or anything, but someone who's very open about her life and the bad things, like being straight up, like just like your show, literally to go on there and do it and and and, and break it, break the internet. I think is another part of the exposure. And then it's become a norm because people love to hate it and they love to love it. And it's, it's things that are hated and loved at the same time, they trend. And and when there's money involved, it's even better. Yeah. And that's kind of how, like, I know that we're going to get a lot of flack for this episode, which I totally embrace. And of course, if you hate this episode, we have a website. Uh, all our hate mail can be sent to I don't care at gmail.com. That's I don't care at gmail.com. But anyway, um, so like, I, I don't see how people get upset about it because remember when Ashley Madison came out, so many preachers and coaches and people you would never think was on Ashley Madison. And like, I feel like this is more of the same thing. You never know some of the people that are acting holier than thou or exactly. some of the main people, you know, looking into stuff like this. And there's uh, so many people that want to do it that uh, that, that, that that either will do it the, the wrong way they can so they don't get caught or so they don't get, like, found out. But that's the whole crazy thing about it is, like, do what you want, you know? Be who you want to be, like, stop living this boring life and and withholding yourself because you're afraid what people think like who cares what people think it, it's your culture. life it's, literally it really is i mean sex literally sells it's just what it is yeah and why not let the women have i mean no no offense to men but men have run an industry that is about women and i think it's time for us to take it back into our own hands and share it, you know, of course, because we we need men too, but to be able to do it and not have someone tell us what we're going to make and how to do this and do this with this way. Like, no, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And if I fail, then I'm going to get up and I'm going to try again. Wow, that was deep. Wow. That was Sorry. really deep. No, that was really deep. I like that. So, um, so what can you do? I'm going to ask a couple more questions and I'll let you go. What, what is something that you just really, what's some of your cons about uh, OnlyFans that you've run into or something you're worried? Can, like, can I be really like straight up? Go for it. Pics. Unsolicited pictures that I do not want ever. People get on my like messenger on Facebook and Snapchat and they ask like, for meetups for they spam me like what if my son's right next to me you know and and, I, and i'm clicking on a photo and then there's just this uh in front of me and it's like i didn't ask for that like consent hello um so that that bothers me a little bit but i mean again i almost have nothing against it at all because i keep it pretty private you know i don't have like a super big like alias because like I like my little nickname that I have and I don't have my in personal information on there at all I don't even really have a bio I think my bio is like blondes have more fun like something silly like which I was not blonde not anymore but you know I actually I think maybe the dark's better maybe I should change it <laughs> but I mean I don't know it just it only worries me in a sense is if it was because someone that I knew personally got too obsessive, but that it hasn't happened. And if it does, there are, there's protocol for that. I get protocol. What a word. Um, there's, there's ways to fix, there's ways to get around that. And there's, and, that, and I'm not going to be the person that is going to be harassed. Like I, 
and, and exactly the, the, i got alex and, and if he's not around i, I i'll call the police and i'm not afraid to, to to tell on somebody if they're gonna be you know worst comes to worst you always can call me i'll sit on them all right <laughs> i'll sit on them for you <laughs> i'm just gonna be down just in case come find me i'll beat them up for you wow this has been very interesting i didn't know what to expect when uh we talked but this has been great um but i, I feel like honored to even be on your show this is the coolest thing i've ever done so um my, my link is no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but no no you you can you can but before we we get all your information and how people can contact you um yeah. For those women, or uh, I guess men too, because OnlyFans is not just about like nudes yeah, and stuff like that. There's more, more for men. Yeah, and it's, genre. And, it, and it's not just about nudes and stuff. There's like people that do like know, it's crazy. different different other stuff, like modeling and just like yeah. exercise stuff. I have a friend, she has an OnlyFans, but it's all about exercising. Yeah, um, I, I have a girl that I follow. She gives me a free little like thing. And now, now she exercises in very great. Right. Uh, <laughs> workout gear but i mean it sells you know, right it's it sells. working for yeah <laughs> she's and, got more followers than i do <laughs> but for those women who are like not as bold and like not as open as you are like yeah. with what's maybe some encouragement that helps them out uh like maybe getting them on the journey they're kind of skeptical or you know, i've actually gotten this question from quite a few women like i, I get a lot of girls um, I, I send out a lot of free links to a lot of chicks because I don't know why they think that I'm just like this like god at like OnlyFans because I'm not I'm I'm like just like just starting to get like in like the mix of it. But I think that you know it's it's all about comfortability. You know, if you don't feel comfortable, if you question it even in the slightest, then wait. Like. Don't just impulsively do it. You know, ask friends, ask your significant other if you have one, ask your parents if you feel comfortable enough. I mean, anybody, you know, talk to some, talk to a stranger. Like, I, most people that ask me, I mean, like girls who do it, I, I should have, it is. So, and I, like I said, and, and I love it. Like, when girls come to me and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, should I do this? Like, are people even going to like me? And I'm like, girl, you're a girl someone's gonna like you i promise like last question um so what's the what, is there an end game to this or are you just gonna you're gonna just keep pushing until the wheels fall off kind of I, I mean i hope honestly if i'm being real i would love for it to go bigger i mean i would i enjoy it so much like it's it's something that i, I already do anyways you know I, I, it makes me feel great about myself. It's, it's eventually going to pay for me to go to school, you know, and honestly, as long as it doesn't get me fired, um, like that teacher, uh, I'm going to keep doing it. You know, I mean, I've thought about getting into bigger things, you know, like doing like cam, shows, but it's just, I don't want to push myself too hard because again, advertisement, when you just don't have a lot of people out there to and i just don't know how to put myself out there you know what i mean and that's what alex is for but we're working on it and and this is great this is like the most exposure maybe i'll ever have hopefully this is the first of many um but i like it and honestly even if it dwindled forever and i made 40 dollars a week i'd probably never stop you know and i mean that sounds silly but it just it makes me feel good about myself and I feel like that's all that matters. So I definitely would say to any girls who are are overly questioning it, then wait. Don't do it. I'm not don't do it, but don't do it just because you think you're gonna make money because that's not what it should be about. That's the benefit of it, in my opinion. I think it's about, like I said, the empowerment, the confidence, the just the all around like great thing that it should make you feel i mean like you women are struggling so hard right now with with the way that we look and, and the way that society views us especially like women of color any anyone men too i mean everyone has such a hard time accepting the fact that no one is just 110 pounds and six foot tall we're not built that way and if you are that's that's great too you know but there's no way to like 
show yourself the way you want to show yourself and not have to deal with that criticism because they don't criticize you when they're on there because they're paying for it. No one's going to send you a message just to talk crap. Why would you pay me that much money to call me a name? You wouldn't. Like, there's no way you could do that and, 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 it, and it hurts you unless you just weren't ready. Wow. So you it's just really came on. You just came on this show and blew it up. I, I really appreciate it because that was really some, that. Wow, that was. I really, I really didn't know what to expect with that, but that was phenomenal. I want to thank you so much. God, thank you so much. No, no, I'm being serious with it. That was very phenomenal, and thank you so much for. You know, we only have one rule on the show, and that is to be straight up. And right you, up. Definitely, you definitely just did that. Um, Always. So, so we did, you know, we thank you so much for coming on the show. But before we go, uh, like I said, this is going to help you out. So we want to know how can people reach you on social media or get in contact with you or see some of your, or just get, get, just get involved with you, what you're working on. Um, I mean, pretty much like, uh, either my Facebook or my OnlyFans link. I mean, do I mean, do, do I just say it out loud or do I, do I put it? Okay, cool. So basically just OnlyFans.com slash and then it's X O M I K K Y. And of course, we'll have an actual link below on the ticker when you see it. And we'll have a link in the post as well. Uh, so, Michaela, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. No, thank you. I think you're probably the first person that we ever had to give us the OnlyFans description link. So, I just be, you're a part of straight up history. <laughs> You're the best. Y'all are great. Thank you so much. Hey, Calvin here, host of the Straight Up Show podcast. And guess what? We're back bigger and better than ever with new guests, new straight up topics, and a new way to support the Straight Up Show podcast. That's right. You can now support our podcast by becoming a Patreon patron. Straight Up has four different tiers that you can choose from, with each tier having their own perks. Your monthly donation helps us produce efficient straight up content that you love so much. For more details, visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash straight up show podcast 318. That's patreon.com forward slash straight up show podcast 318. All right, so we're back here and today we're talking about the COVID impact, uh, more focusing on how OnlyFans became one of the main uh, things that people ran to when their jobs were lost. And uh, as you heard already, we talked to two guests who have OnlyFans. One actually does more than OnlyFans. Another just does it for survival. So our next guest has a very unique story, uh, someone that has been in a situation like this, uh, but I want to give it away too, too fast. So without further ado, help me welcome Miss Monica Gary. Monica, how are you doing now? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you so much. And like I said, I'm sorry about us kind of missing each other back and forth, but I had to have you on our show because we met on Clubhouse. Yeah. And uh, her story is so unique because I didn't want to give her her title because when you hear what she did and what she does now, it's going to take you for a loop. So Monica, without any, um, without any hesitation, just tell us who you are and give us a little bit about you and your background. Okay, in a nutshell. So yeah, this it's such a crazy story. Um, I grew up in a single parent home. I saw a lot of trauma, you know, abuse, drugs, alcohol, all that kind of stuff. I had a couple, uh, three sisters. Um, I became pregnant when I was um, my senior year in high school. And when I left, I had to figure out how to make a living for myself. My family had always been on assistance. So uh, I, I did continue on government assistance for a while, but I said, I got to get out of here. I was in a neighborhood where I didn't want to raise my son. You know, there's a lot of violence. Um, I had experienced things like I was held at gunpoint myself. Uh, I know I didn't tell you that <laughs> at one point, my son was in the stroller, um, when that happened. And, you know, I witnessed a, a stabbing. There was a lot of stuff that went down that was not good there. So in my mind, I'm like, I have to get out of here. How do I do this? And we never had resources. And my mom was always saying, if we had enough money. So I thought, okay, money is a solution right? I was in and out of church. I, I wanted to love the Lord, but I didn't know how to, to honor him with my life like I wanted to, right? Because of my upbringing. So I didn't lean on him. I went to, I'm going to go make money and that'll fix everything. So that landed me real quick in waitressing and bars. And then I went to waitress in a club in DC. And then I started dancing there in a, in a gentleman's club, a strip club. I hate they call it gentleman's club, but what, that's okay. Um, <laughs> so 
So I started working there. I was in a, a very abusive relationship, had another son. Um, I worked there for in, in other establishments around the area, the Northern Virginia and DC area for about five, six years. Um, and so during that time, and again, I'm trying to keep this in a nutshell. It's a big, long story, but we're going to compress it today. Um, uh, during that time, I, I experienced a lot of things. I went through a lot more trauma, um, not just in my relationship, but just being in the environments that I was in. Uh, I did some things I shouldn't have done, <laughs> but I was protected all through it, praise God. And when I left, I met my now husband. Uh, we have a beautiful family of seven children now. We just kept having them. Uh, so my stepson, my kids, then we had, you know, three girls together. And now my niece lives with us as well. We're able to help out my sister and take care of her. So that's been a blessing. But shortly after I left, I actually got into ministry, which is a whole nother story about how um, God just really met me right where I was. Uh, I was just very desperate and carrying a lot of baggage and trauma and, and he started to heal me. Um, so I got into ministry. That was about 10 years ago. I'm completing my degree. I graduate this Saturday with my degree in theology and I start my master's divinity uh, coming up, but I'm also running a local campaign. I decided to step out of ministry during COVID because I was looking around at um, all of my pastor friends trying to figure out how to keep business as usual after George Floyd was killed. And I said, something's not right here. What's, what's happening? What is God doing here? It's out in the streets with people who need help and need a voice. And I went and felt called to go and walk with people I didn't know in my own community and just pray. And I started to meet people. I'm now on the board for a new 501c3 that does so much community service for uh, specifically black and, black and brown people in our community. Um, and I get to do some amazing things tonight. I'm going to a food bank we do every Thursday. There's so much happening. So uh, I started fighting for specifically the black community in my neighborhood, my area, um, and going to the local board meetings. I said, they're not doing the right thing. There was just so many issues with even trying to get a Confederate flag down that was, you know, miles up in the air over the highway. I said, how is this happening right now <laughs> that this is, you know, not being addressed? And we got it taken down. That's a whole other story. But the fight is very real. I'm right here on the Mason-Dixon line in Northern Virginia. So <laughs> it's like, you know, a, a deep history of uh, the problems that we deal with in our country. It's still very prevalent. So I'm now running for local office. <laughs> and that's my story in a, in a little nutshell there. So. In a nutshell. And we're, we're going to dissect a lot of that uh, story. That's fine. You pick but out that, what you need. <laughs> but, but wow, like, and like I wish my, my co-hosts were here because they would be like Calvin's cheese because he has somebody that's uh, godlike and talks about church and because I'm always talking about church and like yeah I don't, I don't do it enough on the show but I always say hey I'm a church boy and I'm proud of it you know and like I said a, as you were and as I was too we, we grew up in uh, crazy environments but you know like I, I would always tell my story hey if it wasn't for God I wouldn't be where I'm at right now especially people that helped me in church I would never ever die I almost died two years ago so like it does nothing but God to save me so I'm, I'm very vocal about that mm -hmm. uh, but there are some people out there especially uh, young women and women uh, still at your age probably that that aren't as strong as you or don't have that guidance to you uh, as you know, like you said, that you switched from ministry uh, to like political side, which, you know, at that time, I think we needed all hands on deck because what was going on in the streets was so much. And it goes beyond just what happened in George Ford. It's so much that people, yeah. it exposed so much what people do not know about the community, uh, not just black and, and brown, but uh, white who were white people who were as uh, as uh, fortunate as others, you know, and yeah. um but that being said, COVID did impact a lot of us. Uh, the story today that we're talking about is the impact of COVID. And uh, we had two women on the show uh, who do it for various reasons. Uh, one, that they have a child, like you said, that you have to provide for. You did it money fast, quick, fast, in a hurry. Another person, like, she just enjoys it. You know, she just, uh, it, it's, it's better than having a real job because you're not working nine to five and you're not getting chomp change. You're not getting- It's true. You, you're getting tips, but you're not getting like $2 tips, like DoorDash tips. You're getting like $250 tips. You know what I mean? Like the girl was making about almost five grand and like almost, I think in six months, she made $30,000. And it's that just like, right. yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's like, you know, at that, and they're all younger, uh, but you know, from your perspective, you've been in this environment before, like 
what is something that they should look forward to in the future? Or what are your thoughts on like people jumping to OnlyFans during this time and using that as a me uh, as a source of income? Um, gosh, that's such a big question. I would say um, just off the top right now, something that I wish I had known when I did it. Because here's the thing: no one could have told me not to do it. Right. There are people, um, the relationship I was in that was more of a domestic trafficking situation, he, you know, encouraged me to go do this. Um, so some people will say, yeah, you should do this. But the reality is, even if he had said, don't do it, I might have done it anyways, because I was very desperate. And that's a position that you're in when you're willing to do things like that. You want to make moves. And that looks like an opportunity. And, you know, don't don't have shame because that's what you defaulted to. Because at some point you're gonna look back and be like, why did I do that, right? If you're healing and you're growing, because we, we shouldn't have to subject ourselves to these things to get by in life. The, our, our world is, is very broken, as you know, right? And so we just try to make do. So don't, don't take on shame, but also since you're there, since you're already there, if you're already doing this, don't spend the money. If I had invested what I made, I would have been out in like five years. Like go educate yourself on investing. If you're going to do it and you're already there, just invest it and get out because there's so much more for you in life. So, you know, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Get out, get out as quick as you can, because the quicker you get out, the less trauma you have and, and find groups that will help you and walk alongside you without shaming you. And when you're ready to leave, they're going to help you do that. There are many organizations now that are starting to step up and help people. I know, um, is it A1 that was started by Christine Kane? She has a whole organization. That's a wonderful thing that they do. Now they deal with some more extreme things, you know, maybe not women who are dealing with OnlyFans. Um, but you reach out to them. You know, there are resources available if you do, when you do want to leave and do something else. Because here's the other thing. The women that I met, when I was working in the club and, and I met women who were out doing stuff in the streets too. Brilliant, brilliant, strong, amazing women, right? Survivors, bright. I mean, just incredibly intelligent women. It would baffle you. And many of these women have gone on to start their own companies and do wonderful things, right? So hold on to that dream don't get caught up in the lifestyle and the money and wasting it. If you're going to be there and you're already there, invest it and get out. That's what I would say. Yeah. And that's amazing. You said that because one of our guests, she said that she's, she's saving up for school and she wants to go to college. And like, that was in the, but at the same time, it was like, wow, she just, she has to do it. And it's quick money to get, but she does have, and she was kind of adamant to, Hey, if it's going to be a good way for me to keep living, then, you know, who knows, you know, but at the same time, like from a political aspect that now that you're in politics now and you've, and I, I think to me, I think the best politicians are the ones who actually went through stuff. Yes. You know I mean? <laughs> and, and like, I, and trust me, a lot of my friends at Calvin used to get into politics and I'm like, and the ministry too. <laughs> they actually get the ministry. I'm just like, that's a lot of power, you know, I don't want to, you know, because influence is big, you know, and I don't want to. When you realize all that power is temporary, you'll be ready to step into it. It's nothing. It doesn't even mean anything to me anymore. I just get to serve people. So yeah. you're going to hit a point and then I'm afraid for you because maybe that will come. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> but no, but, but no, like, oh, but I think the most politicians, they, what they fail to do is to live life and i think a lot of people mm. how can you tell me about how can you make political or uh make laws about poverty if you yourself have never been poor or you yourself like because me right now if i lose my house right now i know i can use 40 dollars and i could i could be the family of four with 40 dollars. a lot of people can't do that i can because i've yeah. been there done that but for women who don't have that avenue or that plan to get out like if you were elected or if you were in a position to where you can help out more than what you've done already, like what kind of avenue, what's something that political aspect that women can do so they don't have to do stuff like this? Like, do you think more jobs you know what I or? Personally, if I could influence policy that was related to sex work, I would require starting in clubs insurance. They don't have health insurance, dental insurance. That's absurd and unheard of. So they're contracted. So basically you work as a contractor so they can tell you 
um, certain things like, oh, they can fire you if you gain weight. They can fire you if you don't wear enough makeup. Like there's just the laws surrounding this is very broken and they don't have to provide insurance. So there's like, there are people who are always going to do it. What we need to do is start making it something that um, is honoring the humanity of the people who are in that work, right? So it, it is going to happen. It's a reality in our broken world. That's the thing people gravitate to. That's the thing people go and take part in. And I will say this is very important. There are a lot of politicians that participate as customers. I worked in DC. I'm not going to list names, but there are a lot of people there are a lot of people and they're down here in my community as well. And I may or may not be running against one of those people in this election. So that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> it is so, it's so enlightening that you said this because like I said, this is a different realm for me. I'm a, I am a uh, male talking about women's rights. And it's like, you, you usually don't hear that. But my thing is like, I am, I am, there's only three of us men in our family. So we're surrounded by women. So these matters care for me. And I don't have any kids of my own, but my niece is young and I, I want to make sure that she knows what it is about women empowerment. And our Michaela, our previous guest uh, uh, before you, she was saying that, you know, I'm tired of living in an environment to where a man controls how I do my body or how I make my money. And that was one of the reasons why she's adamant about staying with OnlyFans because she controls what she does. And, you know, she knows when she can get out and when she, when she feels threatened. And it's all about women empowerment for her. So, um, obviously, empowerment looks different for me. I'm a believer in Christ. And there's something about us that goes so far beyond being able to control our um, what we put up with, what customers we deal with, um, that has to do with empowerment. So I, that may be the starting point, um, and I understand that. So obviously, those are deeper discussions that you know you can go into with people when they're ready to address that and deal with those deeper things. And a lot of women in the work are in survival mode and hustle mode, and they don't want to deal with it yet, and that's okay. And I was there too, you know. And I just believe we're all on a journey. But for me, you know, looking back. It felt empowering at first, very, very much so. And, and that became addictive. I took something that was used to hurt me, which was my sexuality. It was used as a weapon against me, right? Women, I, I understand you want control, you go to work. I had never worked in a club. I worked in an office building. I worked as a, you know, at a front desk and I was getting sexually harassed. So if I'm gonna deal with it anyways, do you know what I'm saying? And it takes more men like you. Yeah. And please, men, if you're listening, step up, say something, deal with this. I had, oh, Lord. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the stories, but there's so much happening, even within regular office jobs. So women are like, well, if I have to put up with this anyways, then I'm going to make something out of it that really benefits me because this is just my life. And that should never be. We really need to fight harder for women. Well, I am so happy you said that, you know, and, and if y'all are here and you got my support, you know, I know I love my sister, my mom, love them all. My mom was a single mom briefly, but my dad, you know, came over and helped us out, but um, stepdad, but, you know, I call my real dad, but it's funny you said that we joked around about uh, like how politicians uh, were a part of OnlyFans and customers. Like mm -hmm. I know, I know when I worked in the news station, when uh, Ashley Madison broke out, and the, the list of people, we had a list of politicians that was in it, that was just, they had to resign from jobs. And it's like, you know, you, but you're, you're over here at your office talking about, you're shaming it, but you're making, you know, it's kind of being hypocritical, you know? Oh yeah, there was a politician, I forget what state it was, I think it might've been Pennsylvania in the last couple of years that was very, um, I hate calling it pro-life because if you're pro-life, you're pro-all life, not just before you're born um but he that was his stance and his position was anti-abortion um which i i don't believe in abortion but i understand and i've been through that as well we can talk about that on a whole nother podcast but um he it found out we found out that he had actually had a mistress on the side and told her to have an abortion oh. right so the the double mindedness going on and we shouldn't be surprised in the world uh, I thought I was ready, man. I've been through some stuff in the church. I was like, I got this. I have thick skin. I've been in the church. Church folk can hurt you yep. <laughs> like, deep, right? But getting into politics is a whole nother game. Oh my goodness. I am, I am in awe 
anyhow, that's another thing, but Lord help us. Okay, so back on it. Yes, there are politicians who definitely participate and they not only participate as customers, they participate by the way they handle finances and the way they negotiate where resources go in the community. Because here's the thing. Okay, I'm trying to be very careful, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna like out people and say things and I'm trying to be honoring even if they're not good people. So uh, I know that there is a specific politician in my county that cares nothing for people who don't have money. If you're poor, doesn't care, okay? This person has been in office before. I was knocking doors a couple weeks ago. This neighborhood, the f sidewalks and the streets are falling apart. Their HOA, someone robbed them of like $14,000 and left. And these people called the board and said, can you help us? And this particular politician said, move. They can't move. These people don't have any resources. One door I knocked on was a, a family full of Hispanic people. The one 18 year old boy could speak English. He's getting ready to join the army so he can help everyone get citizenship. People are working their butts off to try and do things the right way and make a stake, you know, get a, make something for themselves in this country. And we won't even assist them and help them fix their road. And so it's just a disaster. I mean, there was a woman who was legally blind with a crumbling sidewalk. And so we have people who go into office and they don't care about those people. You know what happens? You know who comes out of those neighborhoods? Women like me. Women who need to go into the industry to try and make something for themselves and help their family because there's not a lot of other options. I need a breather after that one. Uh, so it was policy matters too. So you can you cannot be a customer. You can just be making policies that affect people who are already predisposed to ending up in sex work and you're making it worse. Wow. So ladies and gentlemen, Monica Gary. Uh, wow. She just came on and dropped some gems. Um, I, I'm speechless right now. Like that was, I don't know how to respond to that. Um, so you are a politician and you have an election coming up. Like, how can we reach you and, and, and tell us about your, your, your campaign coming up and what are you trying to get done this November? Sure. Um, so there are a few issues I've been working on before I got involved, before I decided to run. I got very involved and then I decided to run because I said, this is ridiculous that I have to fight so hard uh, as a citizen to get things done right. So let me just get on the board and then I can have a vote and help do the right thing. And that's become my slogan is do the right thing, right? Simple, simple enough, <laughs> you would think. Um, so a few things I've been working on, we had a flooding issue, the county didn't wanna deal with and prioritize. So there are hundreds of people that were stuck every time it rained five inches. Uh, so we went from $300,000 for culverts, which are like the pipes that go under the road to help water pass through. Cause we live uh, on the watershed, like on Chesapeake. Um, we went from $300,000 and there are many citizens fighting for this as well. I was able to help by bringing some attention from Fox 5 News. They did a story on it. We went back, fought with the board to you know, go get this done. Now we're up to like a $9 million project, including an emergency access road and raising the road and moving it over. So thank God it's getting done. People are getting helped, right? So that's one of the things um, dealing with some zoning issues. Our board really favors developers uh, so right now, fighting out, how do we get, uh, there's a new development they want to put downtown, but we'll be wasting tens of millions of taxpayer dollars to favor the developer building temporary parking lots, upgrading utilities, all kinds of things to add to a congested area. You know, Route 1 runs right alongside of 95, uh, all up and down the coast. And so our area, I live right near Route 1. Uh, which we had to fight that out with that name change as well. It's been so many things in my community because it was Jefferson Davis Highway, right? So we're actually still kind of going through that. That's another story. Um, but that development would have dropped like 10,000 new cars without a traffic study. So all these things that impact people, they won't be able to get around to their jobs. They, we don't have uh, public transportation for people who don't have vehicles or have vehicles that are substandard and they're not able to 
you know, use to get to their jobs like they need to, that kind of thing. So it really impacts people who don't have resources. And unfortunately, a lot of those people are minorities as well. So I'm trying to figure out how do we get affordable and variety of housing so that people can live here and enjoy and be a part of this community um, without overly burdening the taxpayers. And so I've I've been learning a lot. I've been reading a lot of documents I've never read and gotten into before. It's been a whole a whole learning curve, but I'm in the fight. So well, and I appreciate that fight. And when when is your uh, when is your election? It's actually the general election in November. Uh, the only difficulty is it's not a presidential election year, so I need all the support I can get because people only come out to vote like we really need to. Uh, and listen, the presidential election is important. All elections are important, but there's something about, listen, micro influencers, right? Million, billion dollar companies hire micro influencers. There's a reason for that because change is made from the ground up. We need grassroots movements to really make a change because the people at the top, a lot of them don't care. I don't care what party you're in. That's also why I'm running independent because people have so much money tied up in this. They don't care about the little guy anymore. We have to fight for ourselves and with each other. So I really need people to turn out for voting. And also, and please, your local elections are so important. So, 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 so important. They set your tax rates, like your personal property tax rates in many places like our county. That matters, right? So anyhow, I'm not gonna, you know, beat that horse too much, but. No, 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 that's perfect because on here on Straight Up, we definitely beat the dead horse. Like you have to go vote. Voting is important. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have the slogan, I straight up voted, you know, did you? And so we definitely, when you when you get ready to it, uh, any way we can help you promote uh, your candidacy for this upcoming election in November, like how can people reach you on social media? Uh, they can they donate to your campaign. How can we reach you and help you out uh, during this campaign season? Yeah, absolutely. So if you just send me a message, like I am so accessible, maybe more than I should be, but I love people. So I will respond and talk with people. Um, but just reach out, shoot me a message. You know, I check all of my uh, message requests, even if I'm not following someone, you know, on Instagram, it goes through, um, through the message requests. And it's just Monica Gary S as in Sam R senior, because I joke that we ran out of names because my youngest is Monica Gary Jr. Um, so <laughs> it's just Monica Gary Sr. at, um, at Monica Gary Sr. Sorry. That's uh, my Instagram handle. And then my Monica Gary uh, candidate Facebook page. You can reach me there too. But if you can't find that, just shoot me a message on Instagram. The link for the GoFundMe, which I prefer, though I'm getting my website set up and there'll be a giving platform there. Um, they do take a percentage. It's around 2.9, I think. Um, and then three cents for every transaction or something. GoFundMe takes no percentage for nonprofits. Okay, so if you give through the GoFundMe, that maximizes your giving. And that link is on my Instagram at Monica Gary Senior. And I need every penny we can get because again, this is grassroots. I'm not taking money from big companies. And there's a reason for that because I'm they're not going to come back later and say, well, you owe us this. No, I don't owe you anything. I work for the people. So I also need the people to help fund the campaign, right? <laughs> yeah. And so and like I told you before, I, politicians are best, the ones who've been through it the most, and you definitely have been through a lot. And of course, we'll have all your social media on our platform. And if you see the ticker right now, it's going to be right there at the bottom of the ticker. Make sure you follow Monica Gary, support her campaign. Uh, I, I don't know how you do it. You know, I need, I need y'all to pray for her because this is a lot to put on your shoulders. And, you know, thank you so much. Before you go, if you can just give us like any kind of word of encouragement or wisdom just to send us off to the people who are out there, the OnlyFans, or just the ones who are struggling right now that have been where you've been at, just like some kind of lasting inspiration or quote or something. Yeah, um, you know what? The common thread through my life has been the God's faithfulness. He never, never left me. He always, always loved me. I've been through some stuff where I, I know I was protected and I've been through some stuff where I'm like, where were you? But he never left me. And when I realized that, that was so powerful that there may not be an intervention in every difficult thing. And there may be some things that I have to do to get myself to the next level. 
that I don't feel like I should have to. This world is hard and it's broken. But knowing that when I feel that pain and that struggle and that deep mourning or even depression, the desperation, the very difficult things, God is right there with me and he is feeling all of it with me. He has an eternal capacity for love, but he also has an eternal capacity to participate in our mourning and our sadness and our desperation and our fear. I don't think he participates in our fear the way that we do. He sees it. He knows we're afraid. He helps us. He is there. He is not afraid because fear is not of him, but he's there with us, right? Never leaves us. I hope that's encouraging because for me, when I feel like there's nothing else, I know I'm not alone. I know I can make it. I know if I wake up and I can live another day above ground, right? The Lord woke me up this morning and started me on my way. I love, <laughs> there's a little Black Baptist church down the street I go to, and that is, that's the mantra, right? Because they're all a lot older too. <laughs> so that you woke up today, right? But we can, we can have that too. Even being younger, even being healthy, because we go through struggles and tomorrow is not guaranteed. So you're not alone and just be grateful for every day that you have. Be kind and do the right thing. It's not rare that you come on the show, that anybody comes on the show and it leaves me speechless. You definitely inspired me. And, you know, from a spiritual aspect and political aspect, because, you know, I, I just never heard it as real as you put it. Uh, so uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, Monica Geary Sr., thank you so much for coming on our show today. Thank you for having me. This is really a blessing. Thank you. Straight up, we know that all lives matter. But historical events have shown that there is an inverse power dynamic between the races in our country. To highlight this, we present our Black Lives Matter merchandise. Because let's be real, some of you don't seem to understand that this isn't the organization, but a message. That message? End inequality towards minorities in America. And just in case that's too complicated for you in English, we have the phrase translated into 10 different languages. Visit straightupshowpodcast.com for this and all our other merch. That's S-T-R, the number 8, showpodcast.com. Shirts as low as nineteen ninety nine. All right, welcome back to the Straight Up Show podcast. Man, Lee, that, those were some crazy interviews, but very informative, man. Like, So I want to give a big shout out to Maya, Michaela, and definitely uh, uh, Monica Gary, who is running for office. Make sure y'all go uh, follow their pages and everything. But man, they gave us some impactful interviews. Oh my God, dude. Like we, uh, we literally saw, saw both sides of the coin. Like someone that's just like just all up in it right now you know doing doing their thing just living the best they can um with the skills they have available and then we've got someone on the flip side that that has done it that has come out of it and is now helping people that are currently in it it's it's amazing right and like i said uh monica gary uh, uh is definitely she's going to make a change i think you know she can see it's nice to have somebody who is you know who's been down there, who's been down the road of just struggling and to be in politics and actually a preacher because, you know, you know, we have that God side because the only God can judge you. You know what I mean? Only God can judge you. But, you know, we still live in a real society that, hey, you know, not everything is a bed of roses and that, you know, I myself have done things that I'm not really proud of, but I had to do it to survive. And I think a lot of people, especially some friends who don't believe it, but I think that, you know, you have to do things to survive and it's not the things that you want you're proud of but you know uh it's hard out here you know and you know and some things that my parents don't know some things my and it's nothing that you know if it's illegal not illegal but it's it's i'm better i'm i'm better to have gone through that and to survive and i think my parents always taught me to survive you know and yeah. Like under 3000 said that, you know, you can't tell me selling is a sin if you don't offer any new ways to win. You know what I mean? So I know I grew up in a dirt poor house and my mom and dad busted their butts, man. They still had to struggle. 
And so like, there was no offer of help. But then when you all, when you ask for help, they say that you're lazy. So I'm just like, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it, it goes both ways, you know? And uh, I want to get your thoughts, uh, Lee, about what uh, Monica Gary Sr. said about just sex work and just your opinion on sex work, period. I mean, just what she said was, I mean, the, the complete lack of judgment from her was so dang refreshing. Because that's, I mean, that's one thing that just hits everyone that's just trying to, like you said, trying to survive, because that's what we don't talk about is when you are trying to survive, morality is not a factor. I'm sorry, but when you, when your back is up against the wall and you're just, you know, trying to survive to the next day, you're going to grasp at anything you literally can to continue to that next day. And, you know, that's what OnlyFans is, or that's what it is right now, is that's a thing that people can grasp onto so they can pull themselves up to that next day. That's, I mean, that's what it boils down to. And any, any service like that. And I, I mean, and like, like, you, like you and Andre 3000 said, we can't keep judging these people until we find solutions that doesn't have to have them go to the OnlyFans. Like, I mean, if, yeah, if you want to shut down OnlyFans, make some better jobs, you know, like give us some universal basic income or something. Y you know, there are solutions to these problems, but until we find these solutions, people are going to figure it out for themselves. I'm sorry if that upsets you, but man, we got to eat. Got to eat. And I like to eat. I like Whopper with cheese. You know, Amen. But, <laughs> but no, it's, but you're right, man. And I think that, uh, I think, I think the most, I think the most expensive thing is the most, it's more expensive to be broke. Amen. It's, man. Like it's more, it's so expensive to be broke because you have to keep living paycheck to paycheck. And uh, we, we get it, man. And like, you know, here we have no judgment at all. And like, like uh, I keep going back to Monica Gary, you know, just like, you know, there are people out there who will pass judgment yeah. uh, and they're the main ones supporting it, you know, yes. and the shade and thrown in that interview, mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, you know, and that's kind of why we have straight up because, you know, we like to tackle these issues. You know, I'm a conservative Christian Lee uh, is a married to a man. And like, you know, we're going to get things thrown our way all the time and you know and we did this episode about a hate mail because we get so much hate mail but it's not even about that it's about hey we're bringing to you what real is you know because they don't want to talk about this stuff like you know who's doing only fans okay my mom well michaela says she's you know she's not worried about it you know like she wants her son to know that hey you know what i did what i had to do to make sure you eat yeah. and that's going on so many places that those politicians who are supporting this uh, or, or for people who are judging people like this, supporting this, like you're helping, but you don't want to uh, confess that you're helping, you know? So, you know, here straight up, we, we want to say, you know what, keep doing you. And then we're going to keep trying to spread the message uh, and making sure that y'all get the help that you need. Uh, and then make sure that we kind of address the issues that, hey, uh, it can be dark and scary, but hey, just keep fighting and look for a way out. So Lee, hey, I want to say thank you, sir, uh, for that producing this uh it's been a long time coming uh for this episode but man did a good job sir man thank you for running with it like you said this is this has been a herculean effort on mostly calvin's part let's be real because man you found some great guests and yeah thank thank you for taking the time to to, to put this message out there to you know to kind of get awareness that hey they're they're just trying to live man Trying to live and we want to make sure that you know uh this pandemic is not over yet you know it's you know as of right now as of this recording uh it's wrapping back up cases are going up right now we're not out to clear just yet uh we do want to encourage those to get vaccinated because you're not only helping yourself but helping your person right next to you so make sure you get vaccinated uh we have vaccinated t-shirts online at straight up show podcast.com it's str number eight up show podcast Dot com. Until then, that's it for our show. Uh, we'll have a brand new episode next week. Until then, there's only one rule to our show. You gotta be straight up.